You are looking at live images from our Fox flight team over Eagle Pass, Texas, part of the Del Rio sector, where in the last 24 hours there were 1,284 apprehensions, bringing the fiscal year just 29 days in at almost 30. 9,000, yet migrants continue to stream into the U.S. at an alarming rate. Let's bring in the spokesperson for the Texas Department of Public Safety in South Texas region, Lieutenant Chris Oliveras. LT, thanks for being here. You and I have spent a lot of time covering this crisis, and I am just struck by the fact that as we are just 29 days into this fiscal year, it doesn't seem that things are slowing down by any stretch of the imagination. And it's not grift. It's not. So one thing I can tell you for a fact is, especially when we talk about human smuggling, we've continued to see an increase in human smuggling events throughout the southern border, more specifically in the Eagle Pass Del Rio area. And we continue to see drivers uh, from larger metropolitan areas, Houston, Dallas, San Antonio, even out of state that are making this drive uh, to the border to become human smugglers because it continues to be advertised uh, through social media platforms and criminal smuggling organizations continue to exploit that and they continue to recruit drivers so they can expand their criminal enterprise throughout the United States in terms of human smuggling. We know it's a multi-billion dollar trade. Criminal organizations are making more money on human smuggling than they are on drugs, and we continue to see different trends of human smuggling that we're seeing throughout the border as well. LT, I think one of the most uh, insightful aspects of this increase in smuggling are the amazing videos that you yourself and uh, Lupe and your team put out of the daily smuggling uh, attempts that are thwarted. You can see here this one that you shot and released this week in the Eagle Pass area. The uh, How many migrants came out of this dump truck. It's just stunning footage. Right, it is stunning. I mean, just to see that it's staggering, especially when you know that these are these immigrants are being smuggled through these type of methods, whether it be in a car, whether it be in a trailer, and in this case, a dump truck. There was well over 100 immigrants. And one thing that you don't see on that video is when that trooper made that stop on that dump truck, there was many more immigrants that actually fled from that dump truck into the brush, but we were able to rescue 84 of those immigrants uh, from that dump truck that were crammed inside. We were able to arrest the driver. Now he's facing 84 counts of human smuggling. But again, Griff, what's important, and you, and you just you brought up a good point, is really showing what's taking place along the border, aside from the humanitarian crisis, but exposing the criminal elements by showing these videos and showing what these human smugglers are doing by exploiting these immigrants and putting them in danger as well, but also when, when you have when you have inexperience, uh, especially in this case with a commercial vehicle, a driver, in this case, that driver did not have the proper license to operate a commercial vehicle. So you're driving an 80,000 pound vehicle on a roadway. It's not only endangering the lives of those migrants, but also the motoring public. And that's why through Operation Lone Star, we've been able to enhance border operations. We've been able to enhance commercial vehicle safety inspections along the border by stopping some of these trucks to make sure they are in compliance with federal and state regulations, but also to focus on those criminal smuggling organizations. And these smugglers, the just completely ruthless disregard for the safety and well-being of the migrants. You know, LT, I want to mention, as uh, Nate Foyce pointed out in his great reporting today, uh, Chief Ortiz, the Border Patrol, tweeted out a seven-day uh, results of uh, apprehensions and whatnot. Among them, the criminal migrants, uh, some seven sexual uh, offenders, one murderer, three migrants, criminals with guns. And it's been an increase of the dangerous. Not everyone is from the Central American countries seeking uh, peaceful asylum. It's a point that is coming constantly made. And I want to ask you, are you at all uh, surprised or even frustrated that we're hearing so much about crime this election cycle in cities like Philadelphia, in New York, the shootings, people being pushed on subway, but yet they don't make the connection with the criminal aspect coming across our border. It's left out of the conversation. Right. That's a great point, Griff. And I mean, that's that's a, that's important. That's going to be important, especially going into November, because the border crisis impacts not just those border communities, but the entire country. When we talk about crime and not just not just those criminal immigrants that are coming across our borders, which you have you have seen many times when you've been out there on those private ranches, the type of people that we encounter on a daily basis, also those that are being reported by U.S. Border Patrol. But that is that is a very important issue to focus on that criminal element and the crime that's taken place along the border with some of these individuals that are coming across. You reported, I believe, it was several weeks ago when we came across a, a, an individual on a private ranch from Honduras who was wanted for murder. You know, that's just one individual that we came across. So how many more have gotten by, especially when you take into account 
the number of gotaways combined for fiscal year 21 and 22, almost 1 million known gotaways. That should be a serious issue that, that Americans need to focus on because it's a threat not only to those border communities, but a threat to our to our national security as well. Because, again, even with the 98 terrorists that have been apprehended as well. So, you know, that one more one terrorist, uh, that is more than enough to get across our mm -hmm. border. But when you see close to 100, that is a serious threat to national security. Frightening and sobering thoughts there. Texas exactly. DPS Lieutenant Chris Oliveira. Lieutenant, thank you for your time. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.